So, um, for the last 50 years, we in the first world have been chasing low-cost labor from country to country, manufacturing our consumer goods, and our consumer goods change very quickly, so we have to have flexible assembly lines. But that era is coming to an end, and as standard of living goes up in other places, and people are wanting to reshore manufacturing closer to home, so here's a Moto X factory in uh, Texas. But the sorts of jobs you have to do in these factories are incredibly boring, and normal human beings shouldn't have to do them. So how about using robots to do them? Problem with robots is they're complex devices, industrial robots, take nine to 18 months to set up, and they have to do the same task for years and years. And you have to be an expert to program. You have to understand quaternions and all sorts of things like that. Um, and the, some of the reasons that they're so complex to set up is you need the controller, you, there's terrible user interfaces, if you can see in that top left corner, you have to add lots of sensors, and they're unsafe to be around, so you have to put cages around them so that uh, people don't run into them. So what you see in factories with robots is people-less factories on the left, not the warm and fuzzy robots one might expect to have doing things on the right. A lot of companies are trying to make things better. Uh, on the top, companies making robots sense people when they're nearby, or on the bottom there, try and make robots intrinsically safe. But what hasn't happened is making robots easy to use, the same way our consumer goods have been made easy to use. Imagine you had to be an expert to use a, a smartphone. We wouldn't be using them. So last year, on, on the main stage, I introduced Baxter, uh, a, a robot that is easy to use, that can go into factories, and that uh, is slides in and interfaces with the existing systems there. You don't have to have lots of wires and lots of programming. And in fact, ordinary factory workers can learn how to train Baxter in just a few minutes. So Jason, a, a tech here in a plastics factory in Pennsylvania, trains the robot to do things, and workers in that factory and other factories come up to him and say, can, can we get Baxter to do this really terrible job that we don't like doing? And there you see in another factory, Baxter packing uh, kits, working arm, you know, arm to arm to, to ordinary workers. They're not scared of it. Notice here, though, that everyone needs to build custom hands for these robots. They use 3D printers to put special hands on there. And the maker movement is making this more possible. And I think as the maker movement gets more entrenched in society, more people become makers. And as 3D printers let us do more flexible things as part of the manufacturing process, and as CAD involves manufacturing information, our whole models of production are going to change. Right now, a product company sends a design off to a foreign country. They make the goods, send them back to retail. They get distributed here at home in whatever, whichever country is home. In the future, product companies may send out design directly to retail who then get things to be built locally and distributed locally. So the whole economics changes. So we've got Baxter, beautiful looking robot. Is Baxter the ultimate robot? Not by a long shot. There's a lot of things we can't do yet with robots. And so I, I, I put four challenges forward for all researchers to try to work on which will make our robots better. If we can get as good or even close to as good as a two-year-old is as good at object recognition, object class recognition, not image recognition, but object class recognition, our robots will be much better. Four-year-old children can understand language much better than Siri or any of our language understanding systems. They understand accents, they understand no in noisy environments, so speech is another important thing. A six-year-old child has manual dexterity good enough to do any task we ask a, a factory worker to do in, in a low-cost production region, but our robots are nowhere near as good at, at manual dexterity. And lastly, an eight-year-old child has social understanding. They know what's true, what's not true, who knows what, and how to interact with people in a knowledge economy amongst themselves. That's what we need to get our robots better at, and then we're going to have robots being doing, doing lots and lots of things in our lives. Thank you.